Uh, uh, transition slides. time into the program. So, <laughs> we'll take that lunch, so no pressure. Man. So this, <laughs> this is a picture um, I found actually as a sticker on a lamppost in, in Germany. Um, and it's an incredible collage of a person with lots of different images put together to make up a person. And I thought it was a nice image to lead on uh, today because we tend to treat learners as though they're kind of all identical. Actually, everybody learns in different ways, not through learning styles, because you know that's it's being discredited, but everybody has different preferences. So we, we treat everybody the same now, particularly we treat them the same when it comes to assessing them. So I'm gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna get rid of exams completely as my elevator pitch, but I decided I was probably a little bit premature. Maybe, maybe we'll leave, leave that beyond the, the five to 10 year time frame. But I think we could talk about how we could use tech in exams. Um, we've said a couple of words about Jessica and where we're coming from. So we, we're quite interested in platforms that might enable things like this. Maybe we could help to um, provide one. But equally, we're doing quite a lot of work to help the community to understand what its needs are and, and where it could go. And my job is to kind of help with that. So what's the big, what's the big thing? The big thing is phones, actually. And not just phones, it's tablets, laptops, devices for connecting to the internet. And when I say the internet, of course, the internet has many things on it. So uh, there's things like Google and Wikipedia and e-textbooks, which you might have access to. And of course, there's all sorts of other stuff on the internet. And if we give people tech in exams, we'll maybe tend to go off and you know, play Candy Crush for, for an hour and then go, wow, I, I was supposed to be doing something. Um, the particular driver here, which you probably can't read, is a nice little Ofcom clip that says, and this is from a few years ago now, that um, the Scots are embracing smartphone technology quicker than the rest of the UK nations. So uh, there's a real head of steam there, what can we do about it? And then we come up with exams. And let's say not just exams, but you know, high stakes standardized tests as a, as a theme. Well, typically you're told, right, well, you can't use that. You know, in fact, hand it in, switch it off. Don't want to see it. Don't you know, smart watches? Oh, definitely not. You know, keep all that technology out of here. But I think it is time to think about um, technology in exams. I think it's an opportunity. It's actually an opportunity to rethink how we do those kinds of high stakes assessments. And why particularly? Well, it's because most of our tests, we're essentially asking people to recall and regurgitate and construct arguments and partial information because actually that is very important. That's the thing we need to do most though in real life is marshalling the available information, marshalling the evidence, constructing the argument, building the proof if you're doing something like that, mathematics. That's what we need to do, but this is what we ask people to do. And there's an impedance mismatch between the two. And if we say, actually, well, if we, if we let people bring phones and smartwatches and what have you into uh, the exam setting, what would people do? Well, the answer is actually, if you just sit and goof around on your device for the whole time, if you play Candy Crush or whatever, you're not going to get much done. So actually, if you are going to grip with this thing, you don't have a lot of time to go, right, I'm going to look for a model answer, I'm going to look for something, you know, someone's done this already. So maybe it's a little bit of a fallacy to think that if we let them in, it prejudices the whole process. So final thoughts from me. I think we really have open book exams in some subjects, perhaps not across the board. I, I remember studying statistics, so I take my book in, I seem to take my calculator in as well. And the point of the test was, can you figure out what statistical test to apply? Can you gather your data together? Can you follow the process? You can figure out which process to and actually how do you interpret the conclusions and a lot of the other stuff actually well, is there any point in memorizing how to do a chi-square test or a t-distribution test is there any point in doing that is it really a good test of what the learner has absorbed but of course it's all very well to say that and you can't assume that everyone has a device you can't assume that they have connectivity for instance in schools often there's not a level playing field my own kids go to a school with, with two access points for 500 kids. Uh, one of them is for my daughter, because she's um, got additional needs and she's got some supportive kids. So she gets her own access point. The other 499 kids have to share the remaining one. 
So connectivity into schools, infrastructure in schools, maybe there's something that needs to be done there. And also, how can we use data and analytics alongside all of this? So if we're letting tech in, uh, how can we actually use the tech usefully? We're doing some work around learning analytics, which is all about instrumenting the apps that people use every day. So you can use a virtual learning environment to gather data about how you're using it. We can use that to help support you. Maybe we can transplant some of that into assessment. That's my elevator pitch. This is me. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Cheers.